a new word. Like the Philippine flag with its gold and yellow sun and eight beams radiating out, rises demeanor and smile, exuded warmth and joy to all who were and all who will be fortunate enough to share her company. Indeed, her name, Riser, means Rose. Arriving in London from Manila as a 15-year-old, one year before exams and transfer to further education, she had quickly made a number of friends and consequently rapidly developed her English. She was a fine example of my maxim. I like mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're not learning. Students who worry about making mistakes don't learn quickly. You need to take chances with language. And Riser did take chances, and smiled, and sometimes laughed at her errors, and made sure she corrected them. Along with 14 other EAL students, English as an additional language, we had a twice weekly session supporting their language in English and a number of other subjects. In the ten months Riser had been with us, I couldn't remember ever seeing her phased by any of the new experiences and new language that she encountered. Until, that is, she uttered that word. Coming up to me at the end of a two-hour lesson, with the gleaming balm of her smile, she told me proudly, I learnt a new word today. A new word? One new word? I hope you learnt more than one new word. What was the word? Bitch, she told me, still smiling proudly. Oh, look, that's not a word you should use, I told her, shaking my head. Why not? she asked me, still smiling, her expression changing to one of mild confusion. It's a rude word. You shouldn't call anyone that word. Where did you learn that? In the lesson. Which lesson? This lesson. This lesson? Oh, who said it to you? I asked her under my breath, wanting her to quietly reveal to me who had fed her that word. She won't be the last person to be mischievously fed with inappropriate vocabulary for certain social situations. And she won't be the last person not wanting to snitch by revealing who had contributed it. But she had no hesitation in replying to my repeated, Who said it to you? A reply that left me nonplussed as she came straight out with it. You did? Me? I wouldn't say that to you. But you did, sir, she told me with the first faced look I had ever seen from her. Why would I say that to you? Because it's a new word, she surmised, expression unsure. I was bewildered, like a nightmare of an innocent accused of some criminal act who starts to doubt himself. I might have explained cuss words to girls in the past, and, of course, they're going to meet them in the hurly-burly of a large London girls' high school. But today? No. What's happening? When did I say it? Now, this was a two-hour lesson, and I usually give the students a five-minute break after the first hour to use the bathroom and generally chill before we start the second part. When Martina had her guitar. Yes. Martina often gave us a short song, accompanying herself on acoustic guitar. When she, you know, she, she was turning the things. Things? Yeah, the things at the top, you know. And she mimed with her left hand. You mean the knobs? I helped. Yeah, to make the strings 
Change tune. Eureka. Oh, you mean pitch, I exclaimed with a dawning relief and a chuckle. Her reply was equally one of relief and pleasure at being understood as she told me, Yeah, bitch! No, no! Watch my mouth and repeat after me. Pitch! Bitch! It was a question of plosives, voiced and unvoiced plosives, which I demonstrated, holding a piece of paper between us. You see how the paper vibrates more with pitch? Make it explosive and blow air out when you say it. Let's do it together. And as we practice, either side of the paper, bitch, bitch, pitch, pitch, bitch, pitch, pitch, bitch. Some students leaving another class and passing our open door were wide-eyed and wide-mouthed. I passed her on the stairs with her friend the next day and, body-languaging a year ten girl, I leant over and mouthed to her, Bitch! <laughs> <laughs>